Welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, except to mean of angel is messenger and the accept meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Ivy Miles. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date as it means a lot to both of us to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so you can fulfill your purpose. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and through divine presence and everything else I offer, I guide you to remember why you are here, your spiritual path, and the clarity of the next steps to take to fulfill your purpose. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Ivy Miles, about spiritual connection and how we all have the innate power to heal when connected to spirit. Now, Ivy is a health, wellness, and energy alignment coach. An SRT, spiritual response technique practitioner, Reiki master teacher, uh, crystal and sound healer practitioner. Now, for the past 30 years, her passion for wellness has taken her from various levels of education and certification, such as fitness, Pilates, yoga, health coach and Reiki master. But after being diagnosed with stage three breast cancer with 19 months of chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, six weeks of radiation and almost three years of her life, Ivy decided to take a deeper exploration into nutrition, meditation, breathwork, crystal and energy healing and true spiritual connection. Now, Ivy's focus is to share this wisdom of healing and connection with other women to support them on their journey, bringing them the vital energy and optimal health and well-being. So without further delay, hello, Ivy, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm doing really well. Thank you. How about you? Yep, I am doing absolutely wonderful. Um, so thank you so much for asking and for agreeing to come on my show so before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you, not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Ivan and I want to be part of this conversation. So please, don't be shy. So Ivy, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how he you healing um, Led by Spirit helped with your cancer? Absolutely. So, you know... Um, as a child, I was really open to um, knowing and intuition and uh, the energetics of the space. And as I found, as I grew up, that I, I thought this was perfectly normal. You know, I thought everybody felt this way and everybody was super sensitive in this way. And, you know, I would approach my mom and she would get really upset and tell me there is no such thing as spiritual connection that was all made up. And so I didn't have a lot of support on that. Um, and, you know, I went through like a ton of experiences, which I won't get into right now, but it, during my youth and my teenagehood, and I just thought at some time, you know, there's, there's life after high school. And so I just kind of moved on with my life. And, and when I had mentioned this to, you know, other classmates when I was in high school, they just, I would get weird looks or whatever. And I just really quickly learned that either they're not admitting to experiencing this or they're just not experiencing this like I am. And so I just started to dismiss like all my intuition and life got busy, right? I, I met my husband when I was I was young, like mid twenties and we got married and we had two beautiful children and, you know, life just kind of continues on. And I remember talking to one of my friends saying that I was really struggling and felt like I was disconnected. You know, I'd always felt like spirit had guided me. The universe had my back. I was really feeling separate from that. And I remember her saying to me, well, maybe you're missing the signs. 
And maybe you would need to ask for like this big, huge neon sign to support you. And I, and I thought to myself, and I was like, you're probably right. I mean, my life was so busy with raising my family. I was running a business and I was missing like all of the signs. Now, now I did connect, like when things happened, my, my grandmother passed or my brother passed and those were like huge events for me. And spirit did come to me with neon sign and there, you know, came through, but then I'd go back in my life and it was like, I was disconnected. And I'm sure it wasn't on spirit side or universal side. I know it was my noise, my noise, my stress, all my things. I wasn't pausing. I wasn't listening, you know, and I just thought I had it all going on. I had started a a wellness career and fitness and nutrition and energy work and kind of dabbled in meditation, wasn't super serious about it. Um, But I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer, which just kind of knocked me off my pedestal because I thought, oh, you know, I'm taking care of my physical body. I'm eating well. I'm exercising. But what I wasn't doing is I wasn't connecting on different levels of self. So, you know, I mean, we know there's five levels of self. We know that physical is just one of them. We know there's energetic and emotional and mental and spiritual. And when that happened to me, I thought, I have to walk this path. You know, my my mom had just passed away the year before I was diagnosed and she had passed away with the same breast cancer. And I just thought that, you know, I, I wouldn't have to experience it because I just thought I had a handle on it. And um, I surely didn't. So I, I honestly took a look at myself like I would any other client. I looked at all my imbalances and there were quite a few of them. And one of the biggest ones was that lack of connection with the spirit. And then I kind of moved on um, from there. Yeah, it's, you, you know, it, it's amazing how we don't see that all these things are are connected um, uh, al- along the line and connection with spirit is so, so Im- important, especially as it does give us those signs that we might know something's wrong a little bit earlier than, 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 than you know, when we do suddenly find out that something's happened and we suddenly get that rug pulled out from under our feet. Um, and again, it's kind of because like we haven't been listening or watching out for the signs that come along. Mm hmm. Exactly. And I just was really I was really taken back by it, because, like I said, I just figured, you know, I had spent years already studying wellness and fitness and health. And, you know, and part of the reason was I had walked the path with my mom through her cancer journey. And so I just wanted to make sure that. I was doing things proactively to make sure that, you know, there wasn't that gene expression in myself. And then when, you know, by the time I was diagnosed, I had been trying to, I had been trying to get someone to actually like believe I I knew something was wrong. Like I deeply knew something was wrong. But I went and had an infrared screening because I had done both infrared screenings as well as mammogram screenings because of my mother's history. Yeah. But when I went and had the screening, like I, I found a lump in my left breast. I knew there was a lump. I told them there was a lump. And they did the screening and they said, you're good. We'll see you in a year. And I just kept thinking, huh? Like, I don't think I'm good. Like, (laughs) what do you mean I'm good? I don't think I'm good, you know? And, you know, it was so hard to get in for an earlier mammogram that I thought, what do I, like, what do I do now? You know? So there was a time frame that happened that I was kind of trying to figure it all out you know, part of me wanted to really believe that it was good. And the other part said, it's not good. 
gets, it's not good. And I have to like seek this out a little bit more so. Um, and that is when spirit stepped in. That is exactly when spirit stepped in. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. They are wrong. You need to take care of this. And you need to take care of this immediately. And um, I'm like, okay. You know, I, um, I actually had a really profound thing happen when we were refinancing our mortgage. And I was sitting in the room and just feeling turmoil, inner turmoil. And, you know, it's just such a tedious little thing. You know, you're signing papers and, you know, putting them to the next yeah. person. And, yeah. And all of a sudden, I just got this overwhelmingly feeling, almost like a push. And I looked down. So at that moment, I looked down. It's a credit report where you have all the addresses on it. And that address said cancer court. And I didn't live on cancer court <laughs> at all. And I, I kind of shrieked and the closer in the room, you know, was startled. My husband was startled. And I said, I, I just kept staring at the paper. Like, why am I seeing this in black and white? And my husband looks at me like, oh no, I go, it says cancer. And she goes, oh, don't worry about it. It's just a mistake and you can call and they'll fix it. <laughs> and I almost started laughing because I thought, this is not a mistake. You have no clue. This is not a mistake. And my husband knew it wasn't a mistake either. I mean, the look that I got from him. And of course, then when we finished up, he's like, what are you going to do? Like, you need to get somebody to listen to you. And I, and I did, I finally, I called my OBGYN and I said, look, I know you are super busy. It was around the holidays. Here's my story. And she knew my mom's history and she's like, I'm going to get you in ASAP. And she, and she did, you know, but they tested me and did biopsies and all sorts of things within probably less than a week. I was in the chemo chair in 10 days. Wow. Because I had five tumors then by that time. So, you know, it had been a couple of months that had lapsed between the infra. You know, I found it, the infrared. Now what do I do? People are telling me it's okay, and I'm thinking it's not. And then literally, again, the spirit stepped in. Like, that needed to happen. That needed to happen. And I'm so grateful, you know, in the rest of myself, you know, that's it. Like I am looking at myself like a client. I am figuring out my imbalances. I am going to get out of my ego that thinks like I'm all good and I got it going on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm really going to do the inner work, the deep inner work. I had a lot of traumas from my childhood that I had, had to work on, but I can remember every step of the way there were certain times that spirit would lead me to do certain healing activities during my journey. Mm -hmm. So, so how did these um, uh, spiritual activities or insights come come into your life? What was it just in a knowing, or did you spot signs, or people came your way, or how 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 did? Obviously, you were aware to look for them because we all know that we're being given information every single day, and we really do not look for them or, or be or be aware of them so right. obviously obviously you were kind of like aware for you know for it but how did these these different signs on this on the on the path actually show themselves to you well it's funny because it almost all of my abilities that i had when i was younger were almost magnified at that point and it started coming to me literally in tangible like words on paper I remember one time I was uh, wrapping something up and I looked at the newspaper and big giant letters, persevere. And I'm like, of course. Um, uh, 
another time I was sitting in meditation, you know, because I'm like, okay, I need to listen and need to find that pause and be quiet. And I had a knowing and overwhelmingly knowing that I needed to go sit and soak in the ocean to heal. And this was at like more of the beginner stage. Well, not really beginner, like probably six months into my chemotherapy. Cause you know, as you said, I had 19 months of chemotherapy. So I knew that I had to go soak in the ocean. And I said this to my husband, I said, I really have a strong feeling that I need to go and do this. And he's like, oh, okay. So do you want to plan, you know, a trip for the summer? I said, no, it has to be now, like within two weeks, like it <laughs> has to happen. <laughs> and he's like, okay. So, you know, the easiest thing to do then was like to, I was living in Wisconsin at the time was to jump in the car and drive to Florida. And that's what we did. Went to Florida and I literally sat in the ocean, but I was told 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes, you need to continue to soak in the ocean for 20 minutes, several times a day. And so that's literally what I did. I soaked in the ocean for 20 minutes. Um, and then there was another time in a different stage of my journey that I was told that I needed to be in a energy vortex and Sedona, Arizona was the place that I was supposed to be. And so again, I go to my husband, we have to go to Sedona. And he's like, why Sedona? And I'm like, I am supposed to sit in the energy vortex. And he's like, okay, when do we have to do this? Is this like a two week thing again? And I said, yes, it does need to be like soon. And so, I took some time off of work and I went out to Sedona and sat in the vortex and, and, you know, there was a lot of validation along the way. I, I stepped into a crystal shop because there are many there. And I happened to be looking through a book of some of their readers and immediately I was drawn to one of their readers and I said, I, I have to see her. And funny enough, she happened to be working that day. She happened to have an opening because that doesn't always happen either, yeah. right? You're either really booked or they're not yeah. in something. I mean, you're just there. You haven't set an appointment and um, saw her. And it was so magical because the things that I had been shown earlier on that she had no clue about she repeated to me, you know, about this is my awakening and this is my time to shift and, and this is time for me then to, you know, learn about healing in a deeper level and then to be able to share that um, deeper level with others. Um, so along the way, there were, there were all these signs of validation. And like I said, they came in meditation uh, they came in my dreams. I had a dream once that I needed to make sure I had more joy in my life. So I kept seeing the word joy everywhere. And at first I thought, is that my guardian angel? And I still think one of my guardian angels name is joy, yeah. but I'm like, I have to bring, you know, that joy was really missing. My life at that time was just about the grind. It was about working and taking care of your family and, there had been a lot of fear and pain and shame and guilt and lots and lots of pain that was not dealt with. So this was a flip side, you know, spirits like, I'm sorry, you need to bring that joy in your life. Go to Sedona, go to the ocean, do these things you need to heal. <laughs> you need to heal, you know? And yeah, I mean, it was an emergency, <laughs> a spiritual emergency at that time. I love the fact that your husband just goes, okay, so uh, two week thing then? Yeah, let's go. I mean, That's well, brilliant. Well, that you, it's brilliant that you've got that support. Yeah, well, by that time, because, you know, my husband hasn't always been a believer, but when he started to see these things happening, he goes, I don't know what kind of connection you have and I don't care, but we're going to listen to it. So I'm like, 
good. <laughs> so glad you're on board. <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't understand it at all, but it's okay that I don't understand it. I go, it is okay that you don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. And and I and I think that's sometimes what, what people um forget, you know, that you can have someone who supports you, but they don't need to um un understand, you know, when I was a kid, you know, my mum uh did uh palmistry and psychometry and my dad was happy to drive her and obviously me and my sister to spiritualist churches. He yeah. didn't really have any interest or in it. It's like, yeah, okay, if that's what you're gonna do. Don't understand right. it, but here you go. Exactly. So I, I I was pretty happy with that because, you know, I really needed that support. And, you know, even when I was younger, I didn't understand the gifts I had and I didn't explore them. I didn't nurture them. And when this happened, um, I knew spirit was saying, you need to do this. You need to explore this gift. You need to build this skill so that you can help others. And, you know, that healing journey for me took a long time. I mean, it, it took a vast amount of more exploration and more learning and, you know, yoga therapy school and, and SRT, you know, spiritual response technique training and, and all these things. But it's like those pieces started to pull together. Now, when they finally deemed me all clear, it was probably about two years into my journey. So it's after like the 19 months of chemotherapy and the radiation and the whole shebang. I still had other stuff that I had to take care of, but they kind of tell you, oh, you're all clear. There is no visible cancer is what they say. And um, I loved my oncologist. He was fantastic, but he knew that I was someone who wanted to have straight talk. So you just need to be really super straight with me because I'd rather know the worst case scenario and then I'm going to hope for the best case scenario. Yeah. And so he says in this all clearing, he says, I do want to tell you with the aggression of your cancer, with the fact that it was stage three already, it probably will be back in one to two years. And here's the stats. And at first, I was like a little deflated because I had gone through a lot already. Yeah. And, you know, I looked at him. I said, I appreciate your candor, but no. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. And, and that was eight years ago. That was eight years ago. So, um, you know, I thought I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to path correct myself and follow those signs and really come into my life purpose. And there's reason, there's reason, right? That I'm I'm still walking on this earth, fortunately. Yeah. And looking so well. I, I mean you you mm. do look you do look at you do look amazing. And the energy that comes off you is so positive and radiant. It's like, wow, mm, that's you. You, you know, it it shows how you can be how sometimes when when these things happen to us if we go within and we start looking at the wider picture and things from a high perspective that you know we don't we we can radiate and uh, and have that joy rather than just be you know shut in a corner um sort of like going okay well this has happened i'm going to have the treatment and 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 just Go and just go and just go with that. Right. Well, and I do believe after working with many breast cancer clients that we often just feel that if we just take care of the cancer at that time, then it's over. And so my perspective is that's just the beginning step. And we need to work with our medical professional team and however each individual chooses to deal obviously with their own traumas or cancers but we also need to take a look at that holistic side of it and the two need to work together to truly heal because as we know those imbalances come from the subtle bodies they, they don't come from the physical physical body it ends up there so by the time it ends up there, we, we do need somebody to help us eradicate it. I mean, I had five tumors. I 
I yeah. needed to eradicate it. You know, I couldn't wish it away and, and, you know, I couldn't juice it away, but I, I could do things to start to reverse my healing from root causes of that gene expression. And that's what I work with my clients on trying to take a look at, okay, what are maybe the traumas beforehand that maybe created these imbalances that we have taken care of. And so we can heal those and then, you know, heal all bodies of self. Um, and, and, you know, I was ignorant of it at the time. And I really feel, and you probably agree that the universe does have our back. Spirit knows more than we do, right? They know where we're supposed to go, but we're living in this human existence. So yeah. we're going to do things from our path, our environment, our whatever. And if we get off track and we're supposed to really be aligned in a different direction, it'll create some static. And then I feel like if we don't course correct, there's more static. And static could be anything. Yeah. My static was my breast cancer because I feel like I was so off track that the universe really gave me static. And I had had a lot of static before that, but I kept veering off the path. <laughs> and so they're like, I'm sorry, we're going to absolutely redirect you now. And then at that time, it was my choice to choose to follow that guidance or move myself back into static. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but and the thing is, it's it's not easy at all. And, and this is why we don't want to do it. It gets messy. It's muddy. It's um, it's hard, you know, but but the other side of it, that's the place that is just phenomenal. You know, once we get through that mud, like we say in yoga, no mud, no lotus. Once we get through that mud and we can have that lotus bloom, it's just, you know, changing that vibration of our energy level is just such a gift um, and, and something that everyone can do. You know, it's accessible to everyone, not just me, you, it, like everyone. We just have to be guided in that right path. Yeah, that's so, so, so important. Um, that you know that we do follow follow that guidance whether it's our internal guidance or it's an external guidance that wants to work with our internal guidance but even then we still have to listen to our internal guidance because right. you, because you could say to somebody okay you you need to uh, um, you, you, you know this is what what spirit is saying this is this is what you should be doing but you you have that that choice you either follow it or you do, or you don't follow it, and you have to go by your own intuition, your own mm -hmm. your own path, whether that's right or wrong. Exactly, and and each each journey is different. It's very unique to who the person is, you know. Whereas I had a little bit of an advantage because I was already you know, in the energetic realm, in the wellness realm. And so I, when I looked at myself, I could really pinpoint, oh, look at what you've been avoiding healing. Look at the traumas, you know, and I, I'm kind of a very matter of fact girl. I'm an Aries. So it's like, give me all the facts and then I'll figure it out. So, you know, I thought, okay, you can't, you can't ignore this anymore. Ivy, you can't avoid this anymore. You can't stuff this any more you have to start taking a look at this you know if you really want to live like i really wanted to live i knew that i was here for a purpose and i really wanted to live and so that drive and that learning and, and sharing and healing um was huge it was really huge for me mm -hmm. okay. and do you and do you think that where you've done your healing um, because obviously, as you said, your mum passed away um, mm -hmm. from breast cancer. Do you do you kind of like get a feeling that you've kind of like done clearing on the ancestral line as well um, for past generations and future generations? Yes, I so love that you brought that up. So a lot of times in SRT, you know, when you're in the learning stage of it, we work on ourselves. you know, like a lot of different things. When I was in 
yoga therapy school, we work on ourselves. And then, you know, before we work with other people. And I really had to go back and do a lot of clearing in my ancestral path. Um, I did it through SRT. I also uh, met with a shaman uh, many times through my journey um, because there was a lot of soul retrieval that we had to work on and some other things. And we had to clear a lot of like limiting beliefs that were on that lineage for myself. And so, um, yes, I, I had to do a lot of that work too, I, I feel for my family. My grandmother was very spiritually connected. I remember people would say, if anything's going on, you know, then talk to Grandma Ivy and I'm named after her. Ah. Um, yeah. And they're like, because she has like a direct line to spirit. And, and I remember that. And so when I would go into these healing sessions, I kept thinking that I'm helping to heal from generations, from my mother and from my grandmother and, you know, and so on. So, and of course there's still work to be done. You know, it's, it, there's it's not always an end. work. Yeah. There's always work. It's not an end, like a beginning and an end. It's kind of like a journey, you know, get, try to heal the big stuff in the beginning was my, my focus and then work on the other things that might come back up or the triggers um, that come back up. But yeah, I, I almost felt, kind of really responsible like for breaking some of those limiting beliefs through my my family beautiful yeah I, th I think that's one of the greatest gifts we can actually do in this in this life in this lifetime um be, because because it does stop the future generations going through all the stuff that we've we've gone through and they can create new pathways new stories new pages Right. I know. And the interesting thing is, I remember a couple of days before my mom passed, there was a couple of times she said some things to me that at first it didn't click. And then when I had to walk my path, I, I reflected back and go, oh, so she was a little bit in and out the last couple of days she was in the hospital. And she's so gracious about it. She didn't want to die but she wasn't afraid of death yeah and so in one of the conversations you know i was holding her hand and i said oh mom you're so gracious because she, she just was a really elegant woman and i said you know i i couldn't do it see and i'm getting teary but i i said to her I, mom i don't I, I don't think i could do it that way i said i'd be mad and and just pissed off at the world and you know and she looked at me and she's like oh you will not like you wouldn't or anything yeah. but you will you will be gracious and I was like and at the time you like to dismiss it and later I'm like what did you know <laughs> what uh, yeah did you know? like were you going in between the realms at that time like what did you know like she had insight already um but I dismissed it and then the other thing she said to me right before she passed that was in like a day or so is she said, Ivy, please, you have to promise me to find out why this happens. And I was like, what? She's like, you have to like look into why this happens to women. This is an awful disease. This is, hor you know, horrible. Of course it was. I had walked but years and years of path with her and surgeries and chemo and the whole shebang. And um, she goes, promise me. And she was always saying things to me like, if I can count on anybody, I can count on you. And so at the time, like I'm promising her this and you know, you're know, you in a place where you know that she's going to pass. And so you don't want to not promise her. Yeah. So I said, yes, mom, I promise I will look into this. And, and just like, it was just a promise to her that at the time didn't really mean a lot to me until I walked my own path. And then I'm like, you need to figure this out. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and how do you kind of like, um, actually, before we get into that, because you, because I remember you telling me this, 
going back to um so obviously the first time you signed that paperwork and you saw cancer road what mm -hmm. happened afterwards when um you mean during that entire time um when, when you actually went to look back at the paper was it when you went back to look back at the paperwork or something oh yeah i did <laughs> i did look back at my paperwork we moved from wisconsin to new mexico and you know of course i'm like cleaning things out and had all these paper papers from refinancing and closings and you know trying to get rid of it and then it occurred to me did i dream that like did <laughs> did i really see that on my credit report so i started looking for it and pulled it out there it was still clear as day i still have the paper in fact i'm writing my whole story i'm writing a book and i am going to put that in my book because i'm like there it is guys i'm not just saying it it's there in black and white but the weirdest thing with that is i think it was near my all clear and it was before my doctor said that verbally to me but this is where the the interest rates kept going down and so we're like oh we want to refinance again yeah and so i remember walking in the bank going i didn't call i didn't have them change that verbiage i don't want to see that word again because here it had almost been two years i've gone through all these treatments and so i'm like oh no so now i'm looking for the credit report like i'm signing papers i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking i look down at it and it says panther court that's where we lived panther p-a-n-t-h-e-r so you know when they changed it they didn't just change the p and the c they changed the whole word and so i was like it's not on here and my husband looks at me and i'm like it's not on here so i knew again and, and my closer goes to me because she was the same person. She goes, oh, did you call and have it changed? No, I did not. Like I was too busy healing to be calling about something on my credit report. I didn't care at that time. I'm trying to live, you know. So I knew then when it did not say cancer anymore and it said our address all the way down, that it was good. So when I went into the doctor and he gave me like the wall clear, I'm like, and then he told me about the prognosis. I was like, mm, no, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. I think I think that's brilliant. I love the way the way the universe and spirit do do things like that to us. It's just, um, yeah, it's 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 just so amazing. So when um, women come to you, how do you normally help them? You know, what sort of things do you do? Um, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Uh, so I do have several programs. Someone could just come to me and they could do like just a one session um, and kind of go through what I call either a health and wellness blueprint or health and wellness soul blueprint, uh, depending on where they're at. They can contact me and we can kind of decide what works. But it, it's kind of like a 90 minute session and we review like mindset movement, meals, or more spiritual aspects, um, depending on, you know, if they're on a journey of healing, or if they're just interested in, in releasing like some blockages and limiting beliefs. Um, they can also come to me just for an SRT session. So again, that is a 90 minute session and um, it's via Zoom. And you know, I connect with high self and I connect with their high self and we go through charts and the charts help us move through blockages and programs, maybe past lives, Akashic records, things like that, that we need to clear program the programming that's no longer needed in their life, you know, and that always just brings in a greater amount of vital energy. So, of course, when we're moving some type of energy, negative energy, we want to replace it with something yeah. positive. So they could see me just for a single session um, or I do mentoring. So I have a three month program or a six month program and it can, it's really customized um, because again, I truly believe that, you know, if, if I throw a box program out there, it's not going to support them. No. It's just not. So that's why I do the mentoring programs um, and I kind of split them up and we work on what they need to work on 
and you know it can be it can be anything i mean it can be any part of self and it could even be something that often they will come to me and you know they just want more energetic healing we work on that and then we figure out along the way that there's other things that need to be healed and it, and that's how i customize it i use my intuition um you know follow my guides things like that to really bring them to where they need to be as far as um optimal health and wellness and you know for some people that's not their journey to go that deep but they want something that's going to feel like it really resets them and i also do seasonal group um uh, detoxes they are soulful detoxes and i call them soulful detoxes because it's not just about eat this don't eat that it's has nothing to do with being on a diet or deprivation although i do teach how to work with foods seasonally so that you're moving with the universe on the universal plane and path. And that creates more ease in our life. Um, so I do that and that's very affordable too, that you could do that with me. And, and the nice thing about that is, is it's a group program, but you get personal coaching from me for three weeks for 21 days. And I always allow myself then to be accessible via text and things so I can make sure everybody is getting um, a personalized experience through it. Um, and then my books, one of my books coming out by the end of this year, it should be published. I am publishing with other authors, which I'm, I can't believe, honestly, that um, I've been through this writing journey and I'm gonna be an author, which I'm super excited. <laughs> my mom would be so proud. <laughs> I know. So, and then I am going to finish my entire story and the healing journey I took and adding all the influence I had by spirit along that way. And then that probably won't be out till, till um, next year, but I have a website and it's Ivy's holistic arts. Um, and I am on uh, Instagram. It's Ivy.miles. If you want to follow me there, and of course, I'm on Facebook too at Ivy Miles. Um, so you can contact me, message me um, if you have questions. Um, contact me from the website, and or just you know book a session. Um, I am taking a little bit of time off here in the um, next couple months. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October, and because of the move, I haven't been able to really connect with anyone to do any big like celebration and it's really important to me i'm coming up on my 10-year anniversary this november so i kind of wanted to do something special i was invited to teach yoga um on a retreat in mexico um so with another very good yogi friend of mine so i'm going to do that um next week and then i'm home for a couple of days and then it is our 35th wedding anniversary and we have to try to take a little time off. Um, so I'm doing that. So I have a lot going on in October, but um, certainly if they want to message me directly, I can let them know where my schedule's at um, to book. Yeah, no, that's um, that's that's abs that's absolutely perfect. Um, uh, and when the show goes out, um, it'll probably be um, once all that's it. Once all that's done, so you'll be here ready to. To, to go forward and uh, and be in yeah. service, and that book will be coming, and that book will be will be coming out. I'm uh, so excited! But I've learned over the years that you know I have to take care of myself. Like yes. I need this this time. You know, I need to go to the ocean again. I've been in the mountains here in New Mexico, but I'm I'm feeling spirit really called to me to be in the ocean. So when I was asked to do this, I was like, yes. I am going to be there for you and the ocean will be there for me and it just will be lovely. And it's really with a great group of women, other entrepreneurs. Um, the eclipse is coming up on Saturday. So yes. we're doing a ceremony on the beach, which is just going to be amazing. But to be around other women, like minded women and supporting each other is huge too. And, and, you know, this at this time celebrating, this month celebrating being here um this many years on this earth i feel so very blessed yeah beautiful and as i said you do bring your energy 
out, which is absolutely um, amazing. Mm -hmm. So as you know, I do um, angel oracle card readings and guided meditations. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching. So Ivy, would you like me to pull a card for you and those watching or do a mini guided meditation? I would love a card. Funny enough, I've got them in my hand. Amazing, that. <laughs> you knew. <laughs> you knew of it. Course, of course. Everyone loves a card. So, <laughs> so obviously when I do the cards, uh, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Um, because even though I work with the past, when I work with the past, we heal and clear from the past. So it doesn't affect us in the present. And when I take people into the future, it's so they know and understand the future. So it doesn't affect them in the present. So... What does Ivy and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? What does Ivy and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? It's going to die. Okay. Absolutely perfect for what we've been talking about as well. Desert passage. Trust. There's a divine plan. How much better desert confirmation. Passage. Are you kidding me? And I'm in the desert now. Whoa. Yep. And trust there's a divine plan that you've been led on. Um, they, they're going. So it's confirmation. You are definitely on the, the right track. You're going in, in the right direction. Um, and everything is as it, sh as it should be at the moment, which is absolutely amazing and great confirmation uh, for you. And for everyone who's watching... You, you know, when you listen to um, Ivy's story and other stories, you know, a, about being, you know, connecting with spirit, looking out for those signs, understanding those signs, you know, that, you know, that helps you trust this divine plan because there is a divine plan for every single one of you, for every single one of us. And just trust and know and look out for those signs um, because they're always there um you just have to tap into it connect to them and be aware that they're actually there um so that's a great card to 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 come out so ivy do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers um i do want to reiterate that this connecting to spirit is accessible to everyone um you know we all have this innate healing and it's just that sometimes our life gets really noisy and busy and we need to take that time to pause. And it's in those moments of pause that we know that there's a connection. And every time we do that, that connection gets stronger. Every time we listen, that skill gets stronger. And in that is so much love, right? So much love from the universe. And the fact that you are not alone, you know, you're not alone because we are, are connected um, by spirit, but you are also not alone because there are those of us like myself and like you, Ray, that are out there that are here to support you. So I, I know that at first that I felt super alone. And when I started connected, I, did, I didn't feel that, you know, I don't feel that now. I, I feel that connectedness with with one and everyone and the universe and nature and and that I am loved and and that took me a while so know that you are worthy and and you are loved oh, that's absolutely beautiful and so to the point um so thank you so much for sharing that with us and I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely definitely have and what I will do is I will put the um, uh, direct links to Ivy in the comments um, after the show. So if you want to connect with her, you just literally click on um, the links and you'll go straight there. So again, thank you so much, Ivy, for sharing your wisdom and your story. Thank it's you. been absolutely amazing. I and so appreciate being here. Oh, you're welcome. And of course, for everyone watching, if you are ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me. And we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to actually take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. Um, and of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny 
by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as maybe a couple of other gifts by uh, signing up to my email list um, and also my the membership um, Angel Wings. Uh, uh, the wait list is now up uh, if you want to join a community um, of like-minded souls and learn a lot more about yourself and your journey and how to get there. Um, so you, you can actually come out of your spiritual closet if you want and enjoy creating life on your own your own terms. So again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and really could do with listening and hearing Ivan's message to give them hope and support um, on, their, on their journey that they're going through. Um, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations because each comment, um, each share, each subscription really helps with your algorithms and really gets these messages um, out into the world so that more people can actually um, hear this wisdom, step onto their spiritual path and heal and connect to their higher self. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye.